In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create web-ready photos. So, typically when you start a web project, you're going to have photos that are going to be fairly small or they're going to be really big, depending on what format you receive them in. Some of them will be print-ready photos, which means they're high resolution. And um, if you were just to save those photos and put them on the website, they would be really big. Um, you could also change the code and make the photo really small but the photo will still be the same megabyte size so the main idea is you want to make these photos small and the actual same size you want to make them the same size um, of the area that you want them to be in so for instance if I want this photo right here the one that I'm pointing on the University of Texas MD Anderson if the photo is really a lot bigger and then I change the text in the code to uh, specify this space this area then I'm going to have a really high res image that's going to take make the uh, website slow and it's not going to load very very well so what I need to do is I need to make the image the, this actual size right here and then when I make the code um, the same the same size it will run quickly you won't have any issues with the website running um, fast enough um, there are a couple things you want to know when you're dealing with web photos is that you can create PNGs, um, GIFs or GIFs, and then you can also create um, JPEGs. And the difference between those three is, is the JPEG is basically a bitmap photo where you create a flat image. Um, so for instance, this, this Home Depot could be a JPEG because it's just a square image. Um, and then PNG or GIF are um, images that you typically have a square of an image but you've got um, transparency in between the image so if I was to change the background color to a black or say a, a you know a blue or something like that with this RAM photo and if this is if this is a PNG it will show the um, this black area and it won't have a white border around it so that's really helpful when you're wanting to um, create uh, some sort of background that might be colored and then if you have color in the logo itself um, on, on all of these because I have a white background I could create um, a JPEG meaning that it would be flat and it would be bitmap and square I could create a JPEG and it'd be okay but um, I don't want to do that just in case I ever get into the situation where I want to change the background color I will have the image already um, uh, already correct with transparency around the logo itself. So, um, if you ha again, if you have a square image, you can make it JPEG, where it's flat, it's a bitmap type image, or um, you can create the PNG, um, which is going to be good with transparency. Now, GIF is typically for very small images, so you might create a GIF for this logo down here. Um, if it was, if it needed transparency, this is of course a square, so you can create a JPEG with that, but. Um, it would typically be very small images. So with that, we um, will typically stay with PNGs because they're better images, they're better quality looking with the transparency. Um, that's what I would suggest. And then JPEGs, of course, um, are only square and flat. So let's take a look at some of these um, as they were originally. So I've got this folder open right here, and it says new photos. Well, we're going to open this Chick-fil-A image. If you have a a, um, a PSD or a JPEG or a TIFF even those are all flat images so they're bitmaps so you would typically want to open them in Photoshop and do some manipulation in Photoshop um, if you're gonna try to crop it and and um, use it from there but if you have a vector image which means um, it's made up of lines you can open it in Illustrator and this is an EPS so I'm just gonna open an Illustrator and assume that it is a vector image so I've opened it and you can see by when I click on the image itself it is vector because it's made up of lines it's not a flat squared image so I can select all by clicking um, command A and I can see all of the area surrounding if I hit command Y I can see the area just the lines now um, if I hit command Y again you can see that there is a white edge around this Chick-fil-A logo I want to take that off because we want to make the PNG right uh, where the edge is around the actual red image itself so if there's anything behind it it'll show through 
this image. If I had that white border around it right here, it would only show up to right here. So now that's that's a possibility if you want that, but I don't want that. So I'm just going to make it all clean. So if I select all again, which is Command A, you can see that I have all the areas selected. I'm going to hit Command Y again to make sure that I don't have anything that's sticking out here that say some designer forgot to include. Now, so when I go back in, I can zoom in and make sure everything's okay. And then, uh, oops. All right, so at, once I do that, I go back to my regular view and I want to save this as a PNG. Now we want to see how big this image is. You can see up in the top right when I click on the image itself, if I select all and I hit Command G, it'll be a group. So anytime I click on it, it'll show the whole, it'll click the whole image. Now if I have this image selected, um, I can go up and see the width is seven inches by 3.6 right inches. So there's a 0 0.5722 and a 0.63, but it's about seven inches by three inches. Um, and if you look at the actual document size itself, you can hit um, Option Command P, which is what I just did, and again Edit Artboard. You can see how big the artboard is as well. It's eight and a half by eleven inches. Now, if we want to change the size of the artboard from inches, you can change it to pixels. And if we're going to make this a website ready photo, that's typically the working format that we use for websites is pixels. So I'm going to hit OK and then from there you can see now it tells me how big the width, the width and the height are in pixels. Um, so if I was to scoot this down to where I touch the edge of this Chick-fil-A image and surround it with the Chick-fil-A logo and the um, the area of the the um, the artboard is now fitting right around the Chick-fil-A logo so I just hit go over and go back to my um, my selection tool click on that and then it'll undo the uh, background and the artboard uh, format that I had just set up so now I want to know what size this image is if I hit file save for web and devices which is shift option control s is the shortcut i can see the web ready selection so you can see the image size over here the important part is of course the preset um, which i typically just go to the left here and click either png 24 or jpeg depending on whether i want it to be um, have transparency or not. Of course, if I go to JPEG, you can, you can see it shows you how it's going to look with the white background on it. So I want the PNG 24. 24 gives you more color options. It's got more color to work with. If you do PNG 8, it limits the color some. So I'm just going to, I'm going to stick with a PNG 24. 